Fantasy as a genre has no bounds, yet when presented through the exaggerated aesthetic of anime, it leaves no mistake about how amazing it is. You'll be my sword and slay my enemies. Hello and welcome back to Animeology once more. We've put together a list of the top 10 anime where the MC is overpowered. Make sure to stick all the way through because at least a few of them you'll want to check out. Burn it all to ash. Hellfire of demise. Number 10, Black Summoner. The main character named Kelvin wakes up in a strange new area with no recollection of his previous existence, only to discover that he's traded those memories for amazing new skills during his recent transmigration. As a summoner, he'll be venturing into an entirely new universe with the goddess who led him there. So tell me, are you gonna come along too? <laughs> I suppose you don't remember me. Here, take a look at this. Kelvin begins his new life as an explorer, and it isn't long until he finds his secret desire to fight. He revels in the struggle against one difficult adversary after another, from the Black Knight of the ancient castle of evil spirits to the monster within the hidden cave of the sage. After one struggle after another, just how powerful will Kelvin get? Healing items. It may be tough, but we'll make this work. Windstrike! Number 9, Bastard, Ankoku no Hakaishin. Your father told me that he once sealed a legendary wizard away. He said he was so powerful, this wizard could protect us, and he would destroy all enemies of our kingdom. In a heavy metal fantasy post-apocalyptic world where humanity is endangered by orcs, lizardmen, and many other monsters, the only thing capable of saving mankind is a chaotic wizard named Dark Snyder that is sealed within a 14-year-old child named Lucian to wipe out the enemies that oppose him. In the name of Inomata, our beloved goddess of beauty. Abruptly, the kingdom is attacked by an evil army called the Dark Rebels. In order to bring out the evil dark wizard trapped inside of Lucian, a virgin maiden, who happens to be Yoko, must kiss him. After being released, he immediately goes on a rampage to kill off the dark rebel armies and, well, it would have been his allies too if it wasn't for our girl Yoko here. You little mama's boy, such a butt face! So this is how you really are then! I thought you were nice! Number 8. Spirit Blade Mountain. This anime revolves around a character named Oriku, a special soul that only comes once every thousand years. He's a smart and powerful individual that's trying to become a sage. However, before he can become a sage, he must pass a very difficult test in order to begin his real training. While doing this test, he meets a few friends to come along with him on his journey. Oriku's friends are suddenly attacked by a beast that was not supposed to be in the exam, making it alive. Oriku comes to their rescue, but as overpowered as he is, it was no problem for our friend Oriku. However, this fight made him break his sword, which made one of the sages to be summoned to him. But let's just say it's not for the reason you may think. Number 7, Sugumomo. Kept wound and folded, the obi was like a cocoon. But when it unfurled, Kazuya Kagami is a so-called ordinary boy when his life turns upside down after meeting a girl named Kiriha, who is made from his late mother's obi. Kiriha tells him long time no see, however Kazuya has no recollection of her. He later finds out that there is an evil spirit who's born to grant wishes of a certain person. Oh. 
Kazuya almost loses his life being attacked by an Amasogi when Kiriha defends him. They're now teamed up in order to defeat these Amasogi spirits. However, the more Kazuya is with Kiriha, the more he slowly regains his memories, which ends up being a bit more dark than he expected them to be. Number 6, Chaika, the Coffin Princess. That's food at least. This begins with a saboteur named Toru Akura, who wishes for war to happen again. Toru comes across a girl in the woods named Chaika. Shortly after, they're chased by a killing Fela, and Toru finds out Chaika is actually a wizard, which is very rare for people to see in that era. After Toru saves Chaika from a near-death experience, she hires him and his sister to help collect her dead father's remains, which are scattered across the world. After succeeding in raiding the king's palace for one of her father's remains, Yuji is told that Chaika is the daughter of an evil emperor, and if he continues this with Chaika and his sister, the entire world will be against him. Yuji accepts this and escapes with the others, but later finds out that Chaika is supposedly supposed to be dead? What do they mean by this, and why does Toru want to have a war? Guess you'll have to watch it to see. Number 5, Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World. Michio Kaga suddenly wakes up inside of a game, where his main goal is to clear the Labyrinth Dungeon. Upon just waking up in this unknown game, he comes across bandits attacking the village. He finds a magical sword named Durendel and kills the bandits with ease. When Michio attempts to log out, he realizes that he's stuck inside of the game. After accepting his fate, Michio's taken into the city, where he stumbles upon a slave master, where he's offered a slave for, a uh, naughty fantasies. However, Michio doesn't have enough money to buy the slave, so he decides to head up towards the labyrinth for money. He suddenly runs into a trap where he barely makes it out alive to buy a slave. Although this anime may seem harmless, I highly recommend your parents are not around while watching this. Number 4, Inspector. What they mean by love at first sight? Oh, that girl was you? But that girl wasn't wearing a beret. I feel like I would have remembered that. And you can only tell girls apart by which hat they're wearing? Kuro Sakuragawa, a guy who's struggling to get past his most recent relationship, is approached by a girl named Kotoko who has sacrificed her leg and eye to be considered a god of wisdom between the human and spirit worlds. They're later attacked by an evil spirit and Kuro sacrifices his arm to save Kotoko. Kotoko becomes furious that he sacrificed his arm for her, but instantly finds out he's an immortal being that instantly heals after being hurt. Run, Carl. <sighs> Kotoko finds out that regular spirits are afraid of Kuro and will not approach him. After sorting out their differences, Kuro agrees to team up with Kotoko on her adventures as the peacekeeping god of wisdom. Later on, there are many mysterious deaths that are said to be by a serial killer ghost. Kuro and Kotoko begin their pursuit of putting this serial killer down. <laughs> Number 3, My Isekai Life. I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. After working himself to the edge of death, Yuji is summoned to be an adventurer, where he gains a second chance in life. 
Although he wishes to have a low profile, Yuji is known as a monster tamer where he's looked upon as the weakest class. However, secretly, Yuji is a very powerful sorcerer who's known as the Sage that also has slimes that follow him around to do his business for him. Signals! Smoke signals have gone up in the woods! You guys copy? As Yuji completes a quest with overwhelming results, the village he's in is suddenly attacked by a pack of monsters. Yuji uses his slimes and his overpowered skills to save the village with a dragon's breath spell. Although the first attack didn't work, he does a second attack which drains his mana, which leads up to him collapsing. He mysteriously wakes up in a bed where he leaves the village in order to keep his life low profile. Although he left the village, how long can he keep it up? His identity hidden within this world he's inside now. Number 2. Saihate no Paladin This time, this time, I'm truly going to live. I'm going to live in this world. This begins with a character named Will, who's been reincarnated into another world to be raised by three undead inside a temple and blessed with all of his past memories. The three undead teaches him how to fight, use magic, religion, and yes, even responsibility, something you don't see so much in anime. In his world, every person is required to swear some type of oath to a god of their choice for incredible power. Hey! Don't cry that I'm playing dirty. The battle has begun. Acceleratio! Uh -huh. As Will grows up, he's required to leave the temple leaving his fellow undead family behind. As Will was about to be on his way, his ghost parents are suddenly attacked by the god of the undead coming to collect their souls. Will rushes back defending his parents and manages to feed off the god. After this, he is now officially ready to leave his hometown. What awaits him in this mysterious world he has yet to discover? Such a vague technique is no match for my blood coursing through your... He has a stigma. Number 1. Gonna be the Twin Tail I will worry. What exactly do you think you're doing? There's no use trying to attack me, so don't waste your time. A dream came true for our friend Soji Mitsuka. He casually dreams about twin tail girls, even going as far as to put his hair in twin tails until one day, monsters from outer space attack Earth and claim the world of twin tails for themselves. Suddenly, a woman named Tuerlis recruits Soji to become a twin tail in order to fight back these monsters. After being recruited by a twin tail, Soji must protect against an alien organization whose main goal is to destroy Earth. Although since he's now a twin tail, he has a secret identity that makes him be viewed as a girl by his fellow classmates and is now awkwardly idolized. How long do you think Soji can keep this secret? Guess you'll just have to find this out for yourself. <laughs> 